William Frederick Afflis, later dick to his friends and bruiser on the football field, was born June 27, 1929 in Delphi, Indiana. The future high school football star's mother was influential in the state Democratic Party, and it would come in handy as Dick got kicked off four college football teams. Purdue's for hitting a coach with his helmet, the bruiser became a babyface. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin 35 years later, his aura of realism and invincibility made him an anti-hero, nowhere more than his home state of Indiana, which he and Snyder began promoting in 1964. Every territory I ever worked in, they always had an office. Right. They always had an office, and you get called into the office for this, or <laughs> you'd go to the office for this, a meeting or something. Uh, Bruiser operated out of a garage. As far as the schedule in, in Indiana, um, Terre Haute was a regular town. Fort Wayne, obviously, probably the second biggest town in, in Indiana besides Indianapolis. Muncie, Lafayette, Hammond. I noticed Elkhart. In Elkhart. And in the summertime, they also did a lot of county fair shows and a lot of high school spot shows. They asked me before we went on the air, said, what was Bruiser's TV like? I said, imagine a wrestling TV show shot in 1953, except it's in color. And you would, even with some of the same names, Bruiser and Snyder, but the interviews made the show, and that's where between yourself and Ernie Ladd and Bobby Heenan and the Blackjacks and the Valiant Brothers and Bruiser and Crusher and, uh, you know, all those great promos, that's where the guy's personalities really got over. From Studio A, we have uh, Ox Baker. And I'd be sitting right there in camera. Studio A. And then when he'd go to me, it would be Studio B. Now in yeah, Studio yeah, B. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Studio A is two feet that way. Studio B apart. is this way. Jim Barnett in the 50s uh, had a hand in all wrestling territories in the Midwest, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. He had started in Fred Kohler's office in Chicago. And obviously, Barnett was more behind the scenes. He wasn't a public promoter, but he had interests. I was born in West Germany. That's uh, the other side of the Missouri River. Omaha, <laughs> Omaha Nebraska, that's, that's west, right? That's west. Germany's That's yeah. west of okay. Germany. June 26, 1970, Indianapolis Victory Field Ballpark. And this actually is a copy of the insert that went in the program. One of those big jobs that Bob mm -hmm. Luce put yeah. together, folded over. I've got a bunch of those. He was Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Brock Lesnar, when the first day I saw Brock Lesnar, when he walked into OVW, I said, my God, it's Dick the Bruiser. Wilbur was so different than, than Bruiser. Bruiser was more, yeah. rah, 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 get in your face and... And Wilbur was laid back and he seemed like really he was smoother, huh? smoother, a bit more of a gentleman. Yeah, yeah. He, uh... But the modern wrestling fans have forgotten about Wilbur Snyder because his career really—he was one of the biggest stars in the business in the '50s. His partner Snyder retired to Florida in 1983, and Bruiser joined him a few years later. He died in 1991 at the age of 62, rupturing a blood vessel while bench pressing in his home gym. To this day, anyone who was alive in Indiana between 1955 and 1985 will tell you, Dick the Bruiser was the toughest man who ever lived. The WWA lived because of him and to an extent died with him. This is the story. <laughs>